my name is Rachel and today we're doing another author's behaving badly. Today's author is Tilly Cole. Tilly Cole is the author of around 40 works apparently, including one that is allegedly popular that I somehow have missed seeing it until this whole situation. She's the author of A Thousand Boy Kisses. An article written about this Tilly Cole situation says that Book Talk is scrutinizing one of the most well-known authors within its niche and I think this just goes to show how out of touch I am. <laughs> I had never heard of this author or her books. Woof but the series that we're going to talk about today is not A Thousand Boy Kisses. Today we're going to talk about the series that landed her in hot water which is the Hades Hangman series, a seven book series where we're doing a lot of typical dark romance shit. We had a Authors Behaving Badly last month about Matt Shaw. A lot of the same things that I said about the extreme horror community can apply to the dark romance community where there's not an issue except sometimes some people want to skirt the line and do things that are inappropriate and then use it's just the genre as the excuse. It's not an excuse. Unfortunately Tilly Cole decided to do something a little atypical of dark romance. While there is a lot of organized crime in dark romance, there's not typically featuring white supremacist groups and unfortunately that is what Tilly Cole did. She created this H Hades Hangman series and apparently three of them, including the one we're going to talk about today, feature the KKK with this one being about a romance between a member of the KKK who was uh, raised in it, set to inherit a position of power within the Texas KKK. Romance between him and the, the book calls her a cartel princess, so the, dart the daughter of a Mexican cartel member. One of the books in this series was actually <laughs> nominated for a Goodreads Choice Award for Best Romance in 2015. Her author bio says, Amazon and USA Today bestselling author. See, this is why I don't trust those titles. This is why. Tilly Cole is a Northern girl. Northern meaning England, not the United States, by the way. This is a British author who now I think lives in Canada. So she is not familiar on a like interpersonal level with the racial dynamics of the United States. Just want to point that out. A Northern girl through and through, she originates from a place called Teesside on that little but awesomely sunny, okay I exaggerate, isle called Great Britain. She combines her passion for anything camp and glittery with her love of humor and dark brooding men. Most often muscled and tattooed, that they're her weakness. She also has a serious side, believe it or not, and loves to immerse herself in the complex study of world religions, history, and cultural studies and creates fantasy stories that enable her to thread serious issues and topics into her writing. Yep, there's more to this girl than pro vanity and sparkles. It says that she and her her husband uh, she was a professional rugby player that she followed around Europe and then they finally gave up their nomadic way of life and settled in Calgary, Alberta where Tilly spends most of her days and many late a night lost in a writing euphoria or pursuing a dazzling career as a barrel racing, tasseled chap wearing, Stetson sporting cowgirl yeehaw. And I don't think that that's the way to spell yeehaw. I don't know if maybe there's a different version of cowboys in Canada. Canada, but I don't I don't really know how you can be in be a cowboy in Alberta. Is that a thing? I don't really know anything about Canada. Despite many of my ancestors coming from there. Shout out to Prince Edward Island. So she's a dark romance series and a few of them have some things that are crossing a line. For instance, one of the books in the series, the man main character of hers lives on a plantation and his quote safe space is an old cabin where the slaves lived. Of course, not a single black character in the book. He brings the love interest there, she is shocked and he jokes, tells her not to worry that it's since been renovated and that told me all I need to know about her, said a commenter. Maddie's video, uh, the video which we will talk about in a second. So one is allegedly set at a plantation, which is a no-no. Tilly has been told that her Hades Hangman series featuring a KKK member as the love interest was not appropriate. Unfortunately, when an Instagram user called her out for this, uh, Tilly blocked the Instagram user. The Instagram user said she used a white passing mixed Mexican girl who was a princess of a drug cartel by the way to redeem himself. She also made the Mexican woman flirt with him to make him uncomfortable. She tried to justify him being a KKK member who killed people for his cause by saying his father groomed and beat him. Yeah in the beginning of the book that does kind of happen and I'll, I'll get to my I did read the first three chapters and I'll get to my reading experience in a minute. There was also some talk about this book the one that we're going to talk about today having been written with Tilly Doing research by way of talking to either a former
former KKK member or some sort of white nationalist, white nationalist person. I don't know where this came from. I've tried to find evidence of it. This is in the author's note of the first book in this Hades Hangman series. I don't know if maybe it stems from there so the author's note reads. I just wanted to take a moment to explain why I wrote certain aspects of this book. For my undergraduate degree I studied comparative religion due to outstanding lectures, many who were considered experts in their chosen field. I was given the opportunity to meet various people from an array of cultures and faiths. One of my specialized areas of study in my final year was in new religious movements, cults, and sects. I was lucky to meet and work with members and former members of such religious groups. Most were happy with their lifestyle choice, others were not. I would say that 90% I interviewed worked alongside belonged to the former, but I will never forget the harrowing and sometimes disturbing testimonies and witness statements from the latter. Unfortunately, amongst the genuine and sincere members of some new religious movements, there were also a very small number of opportunists and individuals who, for reasons unbeknownst to most, chose to use religion and its influence on innocent people for their own personal gain, whether it be for power control or sadly for something much more sordid. It Ain't Me Babe was inspired by testimonies of ex-members from several NRMs and the leaders that abused the power they had over their members, especially the women. The victims of the opportunist groups are often not given a voice and I wanted to give many women I was fortunate to meet to have a chance to be heard. So I think what maybe might have happened is that since this series seems to be about a religious cult and also the KKK, there seems to be some like overlap there, but not necessarily like it's the same thing. I think that what might have happened, and again, I'm not sure, it's just if you heard that rumor, I think what might have happened is that the author's note, it seemed like she was saying that she talked to former KKK members when in fact she was talking to former cult members. So I don't know. I don't know where that rumor comes from. I tried to clear it up as best I could, but I that's that's the most that I can tell you. I did ch try to check the author's note in this book that we're going to talk about, but there is no author's note that I found. So what about this book exactly set people off? This book, Darkness Embraced, is what caused all this. It's far along into the series. So what's the problem with this book? So basically, this guy who grew up in the KKK meets the daughter of a cartel member. Now, he was raised by a nanny. I did read the first three chapters. He was raised by a nanny. His dad showed up every once in a while because he had to be separate, um, I think because of cult reasons. That That is true. He grows up, he joins the military, which I don't know if he had already had, I don't, I didn't finish the book, but if he had already had any sort of tattoos that showed that he was a part of a white nationalist group, he would not have been able to join. But yes, you can s slip and slide your way into the military, even if you are part of a hate group, unfortunately. But that being said, if he had joined the military, I find it hard to believe that he would not have run into issues considering that the military itself is so diverse. My husband's Puerto Rican and the majority of his friends in his workspace at any time in his career in the military, a lot of them have been non-white Hispanic folks or some other ethnicity or race that is non-white. So I don't really, I don't know how you can be, because the KKK is so violently racist and a lot of people, and I'll talk about this, a lot of people hold implicit bias and are like more covertly racist and there's a lot of that in the military, but I don't know how you can be violently racist as in murdering people for their race and ethnicity and then be able to hold a job in the military. I don't really know how that would be possible. I don't know. I know that, I know she says like, I did my research and her fans are like, okay, that's enough. I know her fans are like, she does her research. I don't, I don't know. That doesn't sound, that doesn't sound on track for me, but all right. I don't really think that a British person is going to understand a lot about the United States without ever having lived here. And I definitely don't th think they're going to understand like the climate of the, the military, which is like a very particular climate, a very interesting space to exist in, especially as like a person of color. So <laughs> like Carlos has had, I had some interesting um, and sort of hurtful conversations at work. Like I can't, like the last one that I recall, it, it was when we were out st stationed in California and I mean people would like say, like they would like stereotype the shit out of him and he's Puerto Rican they'd be like, you're Mexican, right? And he's like, I am not, I am Puerto Rican. Like, And then they would say like, what's the difference? So he, there is racism in the military, but again, I just don't understand like how you could be like a, a hate group member and be in there and 
be able to maintain a job in that climate. Again, I just don't get it. So guy in the KKK who apparently was able to join the military and maintain a job meets the daughter of a cartel member and there's tension. And while a lot of it is racial tension, a lot of it is also sexual tension. It's clear that this book depends on a lot of harmful stereotypes, which they're harmful because they perpetuate misinformation about entire, entire people groups, which dehumanizes them. So a guy in the KKK meets a quote cartel princess, book's words, not mine. And because she's one of the good ones, he eventually comes around and I'm going to talk about um, this more in a second, but that's not how unlearning white supremacy works. The idea of one of the good ones is an idea that we see believed by both like explicit racist, racist people and people doing like implicit more covert racism. So the notion of being one of the good ones in the context of race relations in particular is very pro problematic because it suggests that an individual from a marginalized group is an exception to these negative stereotypes. I mean th that's in the context of like any marginalized group not just race relations but I'll, I'll explain why it's a problem in race relations in particular because people do one of the good ones about gay people too. So it says that this individual is the exception to the rule and in this particular case it's saying that she is the exception because she was so exceptional she made him change his mind. This perpetuates harmful stereotypes about how an entire group can be like defined based on like at actions or attributes of a few. It can lead to tokenism where an individual is praised or valued solely because they don't fit the stereotype. It's dehumanizing, it's reductive, it's reducing a person to this token representative of the group that they are a part of and ignores their individuality. It reinforces prejudice thinking by implying that the person being referred to has somehow like transcended the negative characteristics associated with the group that they're a part of and this implies that others from the same group still possess those negative characteristics. So by singling out people as exceptions to the rule, it also fails to address or even challenge systemic issues that perpetuate discrimination and inequality based on race and ethnicity. This is going to be a theme in this video because not understanding how systemic racism versus personal racism is a thing and, and the how we got to both of those things is part of why this whole thing is such a shit show. <laughs> so the people um, that took issue with this book, me included, took issue with it because it is romanticizing white supremacists and um, romanticizing white supremacists and other hate groups is bad. So the KKK, if you don't know, I know some of you are from outside the US so let me explain what the KKK is. It's a hate group with a long history in the United States. It was founded after the Civil War in the 1860s and its goal, and this is what makes it a hate group, it is a group of people forming under the sole, well not the sole, the main purpose to terrorize and oppress other races and ethnicity. So members of this group engaged in things like lynching, arson, intimidation, and they also, they often don these like white robes and hats with, well not hats, it's like a hood with a pointy, it looks really silly. It's supposed to be intimidating, they look really stupid. So romanticizing such a group that still exists today ignores the pain and the suffering that they cause to varying degrees and it does not uplift the voices of their victims. Again, this group still exists today. Books have the power to educate and entertain and make us think more in depth about things. We always have to remember to be very careful and intentional and responsible with what we're writing. Romanticizing the KKK is deeply not appropriate and can create tangible harm to society by perpetuating misinformation. When writers romanticize things like the KKK, and Tilly Cole is not the first, and I don't just mean romanticizing as in making a romance with KKK member, but in any way showcasing the KKK as doing anything heroic, anything remotely justified, is romanticization. We cannot write things that lead readers to believe that in any way these people are heroes or that their actions are justified. Romanticizing the KKK glorifies hate and violence, period. It presents individuals who should be condemned, period, as in varying degrees admirable, not appropriate. This desensitizes its readers, and I think Tilly Cole's fans are proof of that, we'll get to them in a minute, desensitizes readers to the real world consequences of these groups' existence and their actions, and it may even encourage sympathy or support in varying degrees for these hate groups. And I think again, Tilly Cole's fans are showcasing that this in is indeed the case. We cannot be portraying the KKK as honorable or just in any way. It perpetuates this idea that racial discrimination is in some cases acceptable. That's what it's going to lead to. And I think that again, Tilly's Cole, Tilly Cole's fans 
signs are proof that this is the case. We also need to think about others because your experiences, your lived experiences, reflected in books in an insensitive way can be harmful. Reading books that romanticize the KKK and also rely on stereotypes can be traumatizing and offensive to those who have had to deal with this directly. I mean, imagine sitting there and being like, somebody thinks this about me. Like somebody, Tilly Cole sat here and wrote a stereotypic version of a Latina woman. That's what she thinks of me. Imagine being the Latina reading that. That's really painful. Hi, so in me trying to do the right thing, I actually made a misstep. Um, and Sylvia, who is has been talking about this Tilly Cole situation, has been talking about this and pointed out this particular misstep that I see myself engaging in in this video and she has pointed out that others are engaging in it. So when we talk about harm, I was generalizing because the KKK as an organization harms many a group. But in this particular situation with this particular book, the person that was stereotyped within the book, the people group that was stereotyped within the book, were Mexicans and therefore we need to be specific about which community was harmed. Sylvia has been talking about this so I'm going to play you a TikTok from her and I want to thank her for bringing this up. That's something that I've been thinking about the past couple of days in regards to Tilly Cole's books and the harm that was caused to the black community and the Mexican community. As a Mexican woman it doesn't really sit right with me that harm is being caused to the Mexican community and a lot of people making videos are not saying the word Mexican. Y'all are saying the word Latine. And while there's nothing wrong with the word Latine and the term Latine, I feel like we have come to this understanding that the Latina community is not a monolith. So when there are specific communities within the Latina community that are being harmed, I think it's very important to be specific about which communities we are talking about. In this specific instance, it was a Mexican FMC that was used to redeem a current former member of the organization. Honestly, it has been brought to my attention that the MMC was actually in the organization for a good part of the book and that the Mexican FMC fell in love with him while he was still in the organization. So yes, the organization was romanticized. Now, to add on to this, the Mexican FMC was very heavily fetishized and very heavily stereotyped. And I've heard this from people that have already read the book. And as I was saying, I know that there are no intentions to make anybody feel like the word Mexican is some kind of curse word that nobody wants to say. But generally speaking, this society has painted Mexicans in a very bad light at almost every turn. So when there's something that's directly impacting the Mexican community and people are not using the word Mexican, it's kind of having a negative impact. To those of y'all that I've already spoken about this and are already making sure that y'all are specific about which community y'all are talking about within the Latina community, thank you so much. To those that are just now listening to this, I hope you take the time to understand that again, the Latina community is not a monolith. And when we are being harmed, it is very important to be specific about which community is being harmed. And let's talk about the fetishizing that's going on because y'all love to read about Mexicans and write about Mexicans in your fictional books and fictional worlds. But in real life, y'all don't even want to touch a book by a Mexican author. Let's talk about that because Tilly Cole can write a cartel romance where the FMC literally Fs the racism out of a white supremacist. But a Mexican author writes a book about our culture and respects our culture, respects our language, respects our people. And y'all don't want to read those books. I have to say, as somebody who is the daughter of a racist white man from Texas and a Mexican woman, um, they do, these men do fall for these women. Um, Mexican women are often, in my experience, used as like acceptable and exotic whenever they choose them and they continue to be racist to them and they continue to oppress them it doesn't change um they aren't magically healed they are steeped in white supremacy anybody with white skin is steeped in white supremacy me and how my brother who actually looks mexican like our walks through life are completely fucking different it does not change and it is not this woman's story to tell. In a world striving for racial justice and equality, romanticizing the KKK has no place because it undermines the progress that has been made. It's not a lot of progress, but it's some, and it hinders the very real efforts, particularly done by BIPOC women. It hinders the efforts to confront and re rectify historical injustices and perpetuates a divide that runs counter to a just society. And y'all say like, oh, talking about this is so divisive. Talking about it 
it is going to fix it. The, the divide comes from you already believing it. And until we talk about it, we cannot address that divide that is already within you. My flappers are gasted. Let's talk about what she got wrong, how dangerous it is, and what it's actually like to have family in the clan. First off, stop writing white supremacist is uneducated. The myth does nothing but serve them when they're writing our legislation. The description calls him to the heir to the Texas KKK and the White Prince. These are not clan titles. This is not their terminology. She is giving titles of nobility to the clan. She is elevating it. He writes that he was raised to be hateful and intolerant of anybody who is different than him, and she phrases it in a way that seems to excuse his behavior while he is admitting that he helped murder in gruesome ways. I am personally hateful and intolerant of people who take up two spaces while parking, but I do not want to see them hurt or dead because I can still see their humanity. I see the necessity of removing rodents from a house, and I just don't really think about the weeds that I step on until I need to remove them from my sidewalk. People like Tilly Cole need to realize that racist acts and white supremacists do not always act out of this rageful murder whatever, that they really just see people the same way that we would see removing a rat or a weed from a sidewalk. Due to a failure in the American education system, and obviously the British too, a lot of people have failed to realize that there was a lot of killing done out of indifference and enjoyment, and I would hope that the last month hearing people talk about how, um, well of course you have to kill a bunch of people because there are human shields and people just dehumanizing everyone in Gaza, telling about turn it into a parking lot, um, that you would realize that that is what white supremacy sounds like. We have been so desensitized to what white supremacy sounds like in our everyday, the things that people don't say out loud, like, oh my god, I just think they should get rid of all the homeless people downtown. That means kill them. It does. It means an exposure to the elements and a loss of life for your own comfort. That is what white supremacy is. The idea that this man can live around all these different people, see their families walking in the street, and murder without remorse, and all of that changes because he wants to sleep with this woman is so dehumanizing not only to her, but to all of his victims in the past. My grandma, may she be sitting on a pineapple in hell, was really well-traveled. She loved going to China and Africa, and she was perfectly polite to people in public, but when black children would come to her house to trick or treat, she would tell them that she only had enough candy for her neighborhood kids. She would deny a child a Snickers in the same way that she wouldn't have given a squirrel one. It is a level of quiet evil we need to realize exists and look for. The last active clan member in my family had a granddaughter that was a little bit older than me and she was born with something wrong with her brainstem. Her parents would have never known how conscious she was and they worked very hard to make her life as enjoyable as possible, though she depended on constant support. And this evil mother fucker basically disowned them because they would not either put her away or pull the plug. He literally constantly offered to pay them to get rid of it. That is the legacy of growing up in a clanny family. There is no white prince. White supremacist ideals are still so pervasive in our culture, and whether she meant to or not, these books are clan propaganda. Books like this that have a very inaccurate and narrow view of white supremacy are not only propaganda for it, but it is an act of violence against those people who it regularly targets. This book is gross, and it has like a 4.5 on fucking Goodreads. You Tilly Cole fans, just obtuse, just like 179.9 degrees. Do you think I am triggered by the contents of the book? No, I am, I'm disgusted by the fans. You'd like a good story, theoretically. So follow me here. Let's say there's a serial killer and they have operated all across the country. So there are victims and victims' family all over that they continue to terrorize. We kind of know who there are, but there are tons of people that are helping them out with disinformation and trying to convince people that they are actually a good person. There's the news, there's the disinformation, there's just mistakes, there's dead ends. And then there's the propaganda put out there by this guy. And then all of a sudden, some lady starts writing fan fiction about him. She takes the truth about this guy and mixes in with details about other serial killers and then some of it she just makes up. And his name, which is actually Shit Bucket McQuack Quack, she decides to change to Lord Handsome McDanger Man. See, it wouldn't be a problem if nobody read it, but they are and they're talking about it. And all of the information getting out there is actually helping that serial killer hide. The real information is getting lost in the shuffle and people think they're safe when they're not. And what is worse is when the people who he's terrorized before are like, that is him. There are people standing around going, no, that's not him. He's supposed to be blonde. He's got tattoos. That's the picture in my head. Maybe it's the wanted poster or maybe it's uh, author Billy Bull's book cover. There are studies on the harm done by centering 
perpetrators instead of victims? What if the author was told and she did nothing? Wouldn't that be cruel? So let's say somebody took the already romanticized family structure of the mafia, mixed it in with militarized commandos that exist today, gave it the infamous title of the clan, um, talked about the Aryan Brotherhood, and gave them their very apparent prison gang aesthetic. Sprinkle in some neo-Yahtzees, take out the stupid names and tendency for really bad drag, give it a bunch of romanticized titles, add on the approval of a fictional Mexican woman, throw that all in the blender, and serve it up like a bad Chili's margarita that's been sitting in a line cook's car for three weeks, not only is it going to be inauthentic, but it's going to poison all of us. Do you not get it yet? She took an actual killer. She made them sound better than they are. She made them less recognizable. And worst of all, she gave them a road to redemption that didn't include apology or amends. It's disgusting. So now the question is, did this book romanticize the clan? Because according to the defenders of Tilly Cole, the fans, who I will come back into to him in a minute. Don't worry, I'm it's I'm getting there. All of us just haven't read it. You haven't read the book. We just haven't read it. We just haven't read if we read it, we would know. No, it doesn't romanticize the clan. They're taking it out of context. Somebody told me in Spanish. Well, thankfully, there's always one amongst us who is ready and willing to crack open the absolute bottom of the barrel books in order to have a full understanding of a book from a play from from which she can have a full context conversation about it and that's Maddie from my name is Maddie Ness. She's a full 10 minute TikTok on this which I will leave down below and if she makes a YouTube video I will link that as well. I'm kind of hoping she does but I wanted to show you this snippet from somebody who did read it before I talk to you about my experience reading the first two and a half three chapters. I read it besties. So does darkness embrace romanticize the clan? I would say absolutely yes. Now when we're talking about romanticizing, we're talking about the treatment of a subject that makes it seem idealized or better than it actually is. And so yes, in the book, our main male character has left the clan and the clan are now the enemy. But that doesn't mean that they aren't still also portrayed better than they are. And we see that even in like the entire premise of the story, that the simple love of a woman could like save a Nazi. But on like a line level, there are also a lot of like strange ways that the clan itself is idealized. We get repeatedly told throughout through the main male character that the members of the clan are smarter than people think, that they're well trained. He talks repeatedly about how smart and crafty they are and how powerful they are. And at the same time there is a way that the author is removing the main male character from what the clan actually is because this isn't just fiction like the triple k exists and has a real legacy but that harm is never really looked in the eyes because we can't actually sit very long with what it means for this man to have actually been raised this way with that kind of bigotry and deep-seated and deep-rooted hatred or else this wouldn't be the grounds for a romance and so it has to be romanticized in order for it to be the ground for a romance. This is the triple K of Texas in the United States and black people are not mentioned at all. Lynching is mentioned only when our main character thinks about how people who defect from the Klan are the ones who are lynched. The white people who defect from the Klan are the ones who are lynched. And that's the level at which the violence of this hate group is acknowledged. Throughout the book, the relationship between the main male character, the main female character, especially at the beginning, is just as likely to be characterized as like strong dislike. And it's just as likely that the fact that they are rivals in this underground space is mentioned or highlighted as like what makes them enemies or else it's mentioned like, oh, you stand against everything he stands for. And that kind of like wishy-washy language that again separates the reader from the reality of what this hate group is is indeed romanticizing. And then on top of all of that, you make it the burden of the Latina main character in order to redeem this character, in order to save him. And you do so through some incredibly flat characterization of a Latina character. You have all of the like trappings and tropes of a white person writing a Latina. She's spicy and fiery and curvy. She says papa, and that is one of the only Spanish words that is like peppered throughout conversation. From the very beginning, she is fascinated by this man and we don't see him change and then her fall in love. She falls in love with the Nazi. This is a romance where two people fall in love and it's a Latina and someone who is actively participating in the Triple K. Later he leaves, 
But the fact that it becomes the burden of the Latina woman and the fact that the story is about this Latina woman falling for someone who is active in that hate group does mean that that hate group is romanticized in this book. That's not even all of it. She goes over some excerpts that I, and I again think you should go watch the video. It, it's disturbing. I, yes, of course it's romanticizing the clan. I did read the beginning of the book and it makes it clear that the main character, who is the Nazi, is at six years old, not a racist. He goes to school and he meets a Latino boy and then he comes home and his nanny, who is a racist, has told his father. His father comes, he doesn't live with his father. His father comes to the house and beats this six-year-old boy for making friends with a Latino boy at school. And then his nanny reads him a book teaching him, a children's book teaching him to fear Latinos because they will harm uh, them. And particularly he feels very much like he has to um, take care of his younger brother, who apparently is the um, like ne the big villain, the nemesis in this book, because he, his brother, is still in the KK KKK. Meanwhile, our hero has left the KKK. But framing it like this where, oh, he was just afraid. He was just a Nazi because he was afraid for his brother is whitewashing how we know historically people acted out their racism against marginalized people groups and how they became racist in the first place. That mindset of, oh, I just fear them until I meet one who is safe. And now I don't fear them. I don't hate them anymore. I met one of the good ones. She changed me with her Mexican boobies, which is a really weird thing for Tilly Gold to have written because that, that one of the good ones changed me narrative is a lot easier of a narrative than what is actually true about racism, both internal and external in systems. Because when you frame it like that, as if the issue is just this person is racist on their own and it is because they are scared, it almost alleviates them of any personal responsibility because they're just reacting. They're just scared. They're just having a response. And it's also not addressing that racism is reinforced in a myriad of ways and we become racist because of all of those reinforcements combined through systems and those systems are like education media and so stereotypes and media reinforce racism that's why we have to combat them and not write them into a book the way that Tilly wrote this it makes racism a personal problem of fear which honestly only seeks to remove the problem of white supremacy entirely and just focus in on the singular person who's just a little scared. It lessens it in a very impactful, harmful way. And therefore, since it's not as big of an issue, they just need that one good one to change them. Since the issue is not huge, the fix is also not huge. Everything's fine. They recognize the humanity in one of the good ones. That's just not how shit works. The fixing it needs to be proportional to the work that went into creating it in the first place. And since when we talk about doing the work about anti-racism, anti-racist educators literally call it doing the work is why there's books called Doing the Work because there was so much labor put into creating racist thought processes in the first place. There needs to be a proportional amount of labor put into unlearning that, doing that work. And not just within ourselves, but within systems. So we talk about how the medical system, the educational system, the incarceration system, all of these have been shown statistically to have racist tendencies. So we, we need to do work within ourselves and then we also need to do outside work working to change those systems. A simple fix is not the answer. To not even have that baseline understanding agreed upon between everybody about what racism actually is, how it presents, what it looks like, means we are going to keep having these arguments about what racism is, what actions are and are not racist, before we can even get to a place where we can talk about, okay, how how can we fix it? So that brings us back to the earlier mentioned problem about, about how distorting, distorting history in this way, authors risk spreading misinformation and therefore in certain degrees, low and high, normalize hatred, normalize racism, normalize violence. It's not just distorting history, but also about how distorting racism, distorting how racism works rather in the present that spreads misinformation and normalizes racism, both implicit and explicit. Explicit. And this brings me to my next point because the fact that Tilly Cole initially blocked the people who, who, the person at least, who brought this up to her and then only finally addressed it when so many folks came forward is telling. So Tilly Cole did apologize. She made a post on Instagram saying, I deeply apologize to those I have heard. I have taken down the Hades Hangman series down from sale. I am always learning as an author and I have taken this to heart and will be mindful of all my stories going forward. I endeavor to always try and do better. For now, I am taking some time away from social media. Thank you to all who have supported me and show me love. I appreciate you more than you ever know. So the books were in fact removed from being able to purchase 
and here's where I talk about Tilly's Cole, Tilly Cole's fans and her fellow authors in her circle because they were very unhappy about this. And since she prioritized them in her apology, which was yikes, I mean, why do you need to say thank you all to all who have supported me? That's not the time. You can do that anytime. Now is the part where you focus in on fixing the harm that you caused. And there are plenty of people who just like your main character are doing the work to tell you where you went wrong. And you're like, I'm gonna take some time away. What? Wh wh what? And unfortunately her taking some time away and prioritizing her fans saying, thanks so much for supporting me, emboldened them. She left instead of sitting with that accountability and her fans have now come forward in droves in an attempt to ridicule and silence the Mexican women and black women who have talked about this and explained how it's harmful. And much like what happened last year with Kate Stewart, y'all are so fucking predictable. My God, I could, I could make a bingo board for y'all. They start throwing around the exact same buzzwords. This is cancel culture. This is political correctness. This is woke bullshit. And this is book banning. Now, listen, I have had just about enough. No, I have had over enough of y'all using book banning where it does not belong. And yes, I'm looking at you too, Rebecca Yaros. Book banning has a definition. You do not get to make up your own and muddy the waters on what book banning is because your favorite author got told that she made a mistake and then she decided to take responsibility and remove harmful material herself on her own time. That's not book banning. That would be akin to if like my kid's school librarian um, in their elementary school grabbed a copy of Fourth Wing thinking that it was appropriate for elementary school students, which we can all agree it's not, and then realizing, oh, I made a mistake and removing it from shelves after the fact. That is not book banning. Book, ba book censorship has a definition. I'll read it to you. I know words are hard for y'all. Book censorship is the act of some authority taking measures to suppress ideas and information within a book. Readers on the internet saying, hey, that's fucked up is not an authority. We don't have control over Tilly's books being published or not published. Tilly does. Censorship is the regulation of free speech and other forms of entrenched authority. Book banning, the practice of prohibiting or restricting the reading of certain books by the general public or by members of a local community or religious group. Books can be banned by means of their removal from publicly accessible lo locations, by their destruction, by making their authorship and distribution a pub punishable act. Books are typically banned by governments, but they can also be effectively banned by religious authorities, businesses, and in rare case, powerful private individuals. To ban a book is almost always a controversial act in a liberal democracy since its citizens consider media freedom to be both a common good and a necessary component of any democratic society. We do not have the power to remove Tilly's books from publication. We don't have that power. Only Tilly had that power and that was a choice that she made on her own. She could have left them up and what would have happened would have been the same thing that happens with any time a book controversy comes up. Eventually people stop talking about it and those books go on readers personal do not read lists which again in a democracy do we not have the right in capitalism do we not have the right to choose where our own personal dollars go if my ideas don't align with Tilly Cole's don't I have the right to say I don't want her to have my money like you have the right to tell her you do want your money and the thing is you can still buy her books and if they are in libraries I don't think they're being removed from circulation and I don't think that they should necessarily but I think that from now on she should do better about what she puts in further books if they're already in the libraries oh well I'm not advocating for their removal I don't think they are I think they were only available through purchase by her and therefore the only person with the power to say whether they stay or go was Tilly and she chose on her own to say that they were to go a bunch of people on the internet saying hey that's racist and then the author making the decision on her own to remove them from the ability to purchase is categorically not book banning changing the definition of book banning to fit your personal feelings is what the fact at school boards like mine are doing and it's a real fucking slap in the face for y'all to undermine the work against actual book banning by utilizing the same tactics as Moms for Liberty. Muddying the waters on what the definition of book banning is is their tactic. I support banned books, this person, fan of Tilly Cole said. No, first of all, I know you don't. No, you fucking don't. I know you were silent last month during all of Banned Books Week. I know you don't give a shit. I know you don't do anything to advocate against Moms for Liberty. You don't care about book banning. You you don't care. Shut the fuck up. Second of all, what happened to Tilly is not book banning. I'm just gonna keep saying it. I mean, Stephen King himself removed one of his own books as well, and he realized that it was a mistake and it was gonna perpetuate harm, and that was not banning. Several months ago, I worked with a company that I didn't realize was um, problematic and doing harm, and as soon as I put the video up, I had nothing but comments telling me that I fucked up, and people were disappointed with me for working.
working with them, rightfully so, I now know. So I took the video down and I apologized and I don't work with that company anymore and I try very hard to research better who I'm working with. I've since turned down several that I know that are problematic, but I lost some long-term subscribers over that and that's their right. I'm not owed their viewership, especially if I fuck up. Being given feedback <laughs> and told, hey, you fucked up and here's how is not a cancellation. Course correcting isn't book banning. I'm so tired of y'all co-opting the language of people doing the actual work against real book banning and then using it incorrectly to make a bad faith, nonsensical argument. Shut the fuck up. A person removing their own book from availability is not book banning. We actually saw another author write a book similar to this and she just apologized. And I will say though, I'm still not super comfortable with all this the author did because she admitted <laughs> while she was still selling the book that she knew it was wrong and she's also written cop romance but I just want to point out she did make an apology that I want to know. The book is Conversion by author Misty Walker and it's the same premise a white supremacist falling or a woman of color but in this case it is a black woman who is the main character. Here's the author apologizing. Five years ago I wrote a book called Conversion. It was about a black girl who falls in love with a boy who was raised in a racist household. It was the second book I had ever written. It was incredibly dumb, incredibly naive, um, harmful, and I regret ever publishing this book, which is why I took the book down and I have not promoted it in any way in a very long time. In the five years since I published that book, I have grown a lot um, and most of that is due to the emotional labor of the black and brown creators here on TikTok and Book Talk. Um, and I know I still have a long way to go. I know that. And I know that I am going to be losing the trust of a lot of my readers and fellow authors. And I deserve to because that book should not have ever been published. The book isn't available on any platforms um, or my website. Um, the audiobook can probably still be found. I don't own the rights. It's owned by a black female owned audiobook company. There is no apology that is sufficient enough to make up for the harm that this book has done. Um, but if you will listen, I would like to give a little bit of context. Five years ago, me thought that I had done everything that I needed to do to publish this book. I had diversity readers. I spoke at length with a few of my black author friends about this book, and they had directed me on a lot of things that I needed to avoid um, saying or expressing or relaying um, writing, uh, namely that I had no place saying what it felt like to be a black woman experiencing racism. And I took their advice and nowhere in the book does it say any of those things. Today me knows that this book should not have been written and there was nothing that I could do to make it okay. To anyone who has my skin color, please do not be in the comments telling me that I have nothing to apologize for. Please do not be accepting my apology. Please do not um, be attacking anyone who has things to say in my comments. And to my black followers, readers, and fellow authors, um, there, there just are no words for me to express how sorry I am that I wrote this book. So I want to point out here that she knew that one, people were going to be upset or hurt, I should say, black women in particular. And I'm glad that she noted that. And I'm glad that she basically said that they had the right to be upset because validating that is important. That's, that's something very important that Tilly did not do. And two, she told her white followers, it wasn't an apology for us. They did not have the right to assuage her guilt. And most importantly, that we should not be arguing with black women in the comments who are hurt. And three, she did not say she was taking time 
fine way to think or whatever, which is what too many of us do when we fuck up. And that's what Tilly Cole did. She didn't responsibly stick around to tell her fan base not to go after those that she had hurt, which they then did. And listen, this isn't the first time we've talked about clan romance either. There's this one, which is actually by a black woman people have talked about before being extremely uncomfortable with. It has not actually been released yet. It's set to come out in 2024, I think. But we've had this conversation before. You know who has not apparently been listening in on those conversations though? Tilly Cole's fans. So let me address the Tilly Cole fans because this only got as bad as it did on the internet because of the Tilly Cole fans. To y'all I say, yoikes. What in the collective fuckery is wrong with you? Let's look at some screenshots, a lot of which happen to be in Facebook groups, which why is it always the fucking Facebook groups? So I'll read over these and then go through the common themes that keep popping up. I stand next to Tilly Cole's books and what Bink Cummings author has said, I'll come back to Bink Cummings. If you don't like a genre, don't read it. If the genre is too dark for you, don't read it. If you read the blurb and think, hmm, I don't think I'll like this, don't read it. There's no need to down people over books they read or what they write. Tilly Cole is a freaking amazing writer. If you don't like her style, don't read it. It's that simple. I hate seeing people saying, let people read what they want, then the same freaking people saying, she should be ashamed of writing that. She should banned for writing that. How about you mind your own business and don't support them and go on your way. Others do support them. Others do love their books. You don't have to. Bank Cummings, another author. This is my final statement on the Tilly Cole and author canceling issues going around. I'm not participating in the spread of drama anymore. We're giving a platform to this kind of poor behavior. After being called names today by many different readers because I support author's choices to write write fiction however they choose. Here's all I'm gonna say. Um, I'm gonna take a beat real quick before I explain what the rest of what she says is. She wasn't called names that I saw. What she was called was a racist, which is not a name that's a descriptor. If I call you, if I call you a bitch, I'm not describing a behavior that you're enacting in. I'm calling you a name. If I call you a racist, I'm describing a behavior you're engaging in. Does that make sense to you? I feel like authors, writers, professional ones should probably know the difference between names and descriptors. Okay, you are entitled to read whatever you wish and have opinions on what you read, but I highly suggest you steer clear of dark romance, including biker romance, if you're easily offended, period. Those stories are painted with villain and morally gray characters that oftentimes don't have many redeeming qualities apart for their fierce love or their families and or women. They usually have sordid pasts and current problematic lifestyles. Again, if you don't like this, don't read it. I was told today this is an author problem, not a reader problem. No, it's not. Readers should, have be, should never be shackled by one person triggers offensive or their pitchfork carrying PC brigade. I have this hoodie on that says reading is political. I now kind of wish that it said something as hilarious as pitchfork carrying PC brigade. Yes ma'am. Read what brings you joy. The end. Peace. Read what brings you joy. Apparently for Bink Cummings that's KKK romances. That's not actually true. She said she didn't really love the book but the KKK part didn't bother her which is weird and probably why people are describing her as racist. Not name calling, describing. In her comments it says there are way more of us than there are of them. We will always rise above. Which I know you didn't mean for that to sound white supremacist. <laughs> but I can't help but point out the irony. But here's where it gets really ironic and really fucking funny. The other day I heard a polit famous political reporter say, life's hard, get a helmet and move on. I could never understand why people intentionally put themselves in positions they find offensive. Go somewhere else and live your best life, but leave the rest of us alone while you do it. And this person responded saying, I love Candace, as in Owens. I want you to sit with that for a moment. I want you to sit with that for a moment. Remember how we talked about one of the good ones earlier? She is so well grounded. She doesn't buy into the censoring censoring. This is not how you spell censoring. The tough subjects, so well read and educated, she speaks the truth. She doesn't buy into censoring. She's not for book banning. You sure about that? Anyways, um, as if any of us are surprised that this particular post has Candace Owens fans in it. Certainly not I, but my god, I didn't expect them to say it out loud. Bink Cummings said, they're after Tilly Cole. First her, then who? The one, uh, so they're talking about which book, it says, the one with the, or a former KKK falls for a cartel princess. There was a issue because she's a white author writing a cartel princess and somehow romanticizing. Romanizing. Bink, you are an author. Romanizing? You missed so many letters. I'm fucking appalled. Oh, sigh. As long as he's not a racist and once he is reformed, I see no issues. You don't see any issues, but are you really who should be speaking on this? Any hoozy. All I'm getting here is that white women are apparently turned on by stories where the romantic love interest is a KKK member. Not really being the white women aren't racist accusations there. And that's fair. And Bink, 
Jinx said, have you read the book? Which is gonna come up a lot. Why would anyone? What's appealing about reading a book featuring the KKK? What about it attracted you? Honestly, I read it a long ass time ago. I didn't particularly love that book. It took a while to get into. It's <laughs> okay. I like most of the rest of the series, but I'm gonna go reread it for further clarification. Oh yes, I definitely trust you to be able to pick up on the nuances that is implicit racism and um, how romanticizing, romanticizing the KKK actually works. I definitely trust you to be able to pick up on those things for sure. What I remember is he is a reformed man having been indoctrinated into the life blah blah blah. He wants to help this woman who's supposed to marry a man she doesn't want to. He also wants to get out from under the thumb and awful life he's been a part of. None of Tilly's books do I remember having anything in them making KKK a positive thing or romantic in any way. They are legit super dark romances that touch on a lot of subjects but also a lot of my mutuals who spoke up about this got a lot of really disgusting comments in their TikToks about this. I was disturbed. You disgust me. Read the book and do your research. That's not the focus of the series. It's bringing cult abuse, blah, blah, blah. Tilly wrote a book with a character who used to be in the KKK. She's not supporting them. So stupid. I'll never understand why people have to go places that don't fit them and then try to change those places to fit them when they could have just not gone there to begin with. Not every space is for you. Leave dark romance alone for the, those of us who need our romance do darker. You need your romance to feature the KKK. You can't do dark romance without the KKK. Okay. That's definitely their you problem, not an author or us problem. I've been done with Karens for a long time. Read what you want and I will damn well write what I want. Sorry, not sorry. I think you're using Karens wrong, but all right. I agree. Well said. I love Tilly Cole's books and I've read them for years. I myself write very dark, messed up books. I don't see why I have to explain ourselves on why we write it. This is the story. Read it or don't. It's why I don't do arcs and never will. Yeah, that's why. You haven't read the series. Don't come for Tilly. She's one of the greatest authors ever. Just another form of can Cancel, cancel culture. You're not allowed to like what you like, etc. Hope they don't get a hold of a bully romance. They'll be flipping out. For all those coming at Tilly for romanticizing the KKK, let's clear this once and for all because I'll be damned if I sit here and let you spew on shit about a book you clearly not read. Here's what happens in the book. A man who was born and brought up in the KKK clan, who's seen all his loved ones supporting the KKK's mythology with fierce passion since he was born, who's expected to one day lead this clan, who gets beaten up if he dares think otherwise, who knows nothing else, falls in love with a Mexican woman who makes him question his beliefs that he's been fed since who makes him realize how hateful and malicious of propaganda is being run by the KKK. He then leaves the clan and fights against it, literally, while carrying shit a ton of guilt, even though he clearly didn't know any better. Tell me, almighty ones, how is this romanticizing the KKK? Do you not see how well this author has written about <laughs> redemption and complexities of such issues in the human psychology? It's almost as if you were looking for a reason, no matter how baseless, to come after her because y'all are bored as fuck, because there's no way you would say this shit if you read the book. You don't like dark romance? Don't read it. It's that simple. Just like you wouldn't deliberately consume something you know you can't stomach. This is all coming from a brown person who's well aware of racism and who's one of the most favorite series of all time is The Hades Hangman. Love you, Tilly. Have you read it? It says he killed for a cause, but he learns how wrong it is and turns his back on it. Tilly does not romanticize the KKK in these books. She does the opposite. Do you even know what the Hades Hangman are? They're a motorcycle club. They deal in arms and drugs. They're not supposed to be heroes. Characters have arcs and that is Tanner's learning that every Everything he had learned he had been taught is wrong. Dark romance is clearly not for you. Stick to chiclet. Oh my goodness. <laughs> People who go around just looking to be offended are not worth arguing with anyway. I don't give a fuck either. This is dark romance, as in fiction. It ain't real life. Same as the Game of Thrones, but I don't see people going after that show and others like it, even though it's rom it romanticized rape. I think a lot of us had that conversation, actually, but all right. Because it's fiction, right? So how is this any different? Stop reading dark romance if these things bother you. No one's forcing this book down your throat. Romanticizing would be him never learning that the way he was taught was wrong and not wanting to change and grow. He was literally raised in the KKK. Everyone around him echoed these beliefs so he believed them. You don't have to find him redeemable if you don't want to. He saw he was wrong and changed but it's not the same as Tilly romanticism. Not th not the same as Tilly romanticizing the KKK. Sometimes characters are just not likable. And then this person, and this is fucking hilarious. Guys, the cure to racism is sex. Once the person of color and suddenly they're, they have worth. Not that they're intelligent, not that they're contributions to society. It's their genitalia that makes POC worth something. Thank you. And this is um, being very 
tongue in cheek but pointing out that this is like a one of the good ones situation. Be for real, you haven't even read the book because if you had you'd know the whole premise was the heroes fighting against the KKK. As a brown person myself it's very embarrassing to see people like you calling any white person a racist. Why? It's literally dark romance fiction. I don't see y'all getting equally butthurt about movies and shows that have dark themes to them which in real life would be heinous crimes. Game of Thrones being a good example, a hero rapes the heroine but she still falls in love with him. Why don't we question that? We know it's not real. Well Tilly isn't writing biographies either or did you get it confused that she did? Hold on. I'm genuinely trying to think like I Game of Thrones has a lot of fucked up shit in it and a lot of us do critique it for that. I'm trying to think of who she's talking. Is she talking about Khal Drogo? I don't think that I don't think that any of us thought that that was like a like a good like a good thing like she was okay. All right we'll move on. Well Tilly isn't writing biographies either or did you get it confused that she did? So that's actually it this brings us up to a good point which is that the KKK exists whereas like Khal Drogo and his people don't exist. Um, and we can still have a conversation about like how harmful that rep is but like this is a group that exists and romanticizing them has real world consequences. I just okay all right so what you're saying is that in the real world any a person brought up wow why you know it makes my dyslexia work worse when they don't properly use grammar. So what you're saying is in the real world a person brought up any white supremacist family and has been indoctrinated can never change their ways. Um no nobody said that. I'm sorry you're confused ma'am. Have you even read the series? Might as well cancel all dark romance authors. This is ridiculous. I agree Brooke your comment is ridiculous. I'm done reading experts uh, reading screenshots now. Uh, a few things I want to address. Actually it's not a few things. It's one category of thing with several different examples. The category, the overarching category is that's not how that works. Example one, we already discussed this is not book banning. That's not how that works. Example number two, y'all are also saying it's not romanticizing the KKK. Okay that's because you've decided that romanticizing the KKK only means a certain thing that you just made up on the spot. That's not how that works. Example three, if you don't like dark romance don't read it. That's not how that works. You don't get to pretend we're having a different argument than we are actually having. Plenty of people critiquing this for being racist are readers of dark romance. What's happening isn't a dislike of the genre. What's happening is pointing out that you cannot romanticize a very real hate group. Which brings me to my next example. It's just fiction. Are you implying that something being fiction makes it above criticism and not able to affect the real world? Because again that's not how that works. And you dark romance readers know this because you say with one side of your mouth that dark romance is a safe place for people to work out their trauma. Which it can be. And that is and that is true. But then as soon as we say hey not everything is cool to romanticize not everything is up for grabs for you to write in a dark way about suddenly it's but it's just fiction but I thought that you just admitted that it can have real life effects what do you mean that's not how that works you're only saying that because you don't want to agree it has a negative effect because that will make you feel like you have to be accountable next example you're being so negative I just like to read my books I hate politics why do you have to get politics involved in everything I just want to be happy and read my books I want to be on the good side of books talk as if you're framing this as if it's like positive love and light versus negative Nancy's who want to take away the books. It's literally women of color being like hey please don't write stereotypical versions of us falling in love with white supremacists. That's too negative for you. You categorically do not have the moral high ground here and you cannot sneakily grab it by pretending that this is simple internet drama. People got a little upset about something. All you're showing is that you have no idea how the personal is political because your identity has never been politicized. You aren't being positive. That's not how that works. You're also deciding that you all, who mostly look like me, it got cut out earlier so I have to ask you again. Mm. What would you do if I wrote a KKK romance? Good question. Or we fight you. To the death? But I would definitely divorce you. Okay. That's fair. After a long, long conversation about why the fuck did you think that that was okay? And I'm sure I would have said something in the process of you writing it because it probably would have gotten brought up. <laughs> and then you still continued to write it after our initial conversation. Divorce. <laughs> Fair enough. Believe it or not, jail. <laughs> You aren't being positive. That's not what positivity is. That's a term called toxic positivity in which you're weaponizing the idea of positivity in order to distract and diminish from a really important conversation that other people are trying to have that you just don't care about. So that's just not how that works. Y'all are also deciding that you, who mostly look like me, which is um, white as a ghost, are deciding what is and is not racist. That's not how that works. It's especially, what, that's not how that works. That's especially not how it works for the two of 
you who decided to share that the BIPOC voice that you listen to is Candace Owen. Yeah, because she confirms your bias, right? That's what ha that's what's happening, which is literally what she gets paid to do. Meanwhile, y'all have showed up in the comments of multiple uh, black women and Mexican women who have spoken up about this and then proceeded to invalidate them in multiple ways. Which brings me to my last example. Y'all are also doing this thing where you are doing different variations of I'll validate this when and then shifting the goalpost. And that's not how this works. Because the goalpost was I'd agree if it was romanticizing but it's not. And then it was well you haven't read it. So when an Afro-Latina woman not only reads it but then explains in excruciating detail about how specifically it is in fact romanticizing the KKK, y'all shift the goalpost again. Multiple of you. And that's just those of you who listened at all. Don't get me fucking started on those of you who went into Mari's comments where she said, I read it and then proceeded to repeat the line that was told to you in these author and reader groups. Well, if you would read the book, she did. She did. And you'd know that if you would listen, but you weren't there to listen, were you? Y'all only listen to BIPOC women when they are confirming your own bias, your already established beliefs, like Candace Owens. That's why you listen to her at all. Otherwise, you can't find it within you to listen to a perspective that is not yours, which is why, like Mari says in her video that you didn't really listen to, y'all care more about being called a racist than you do about racism, which is just going to show that all you really care about is you, which is why y'all went so far as not just to invalidate the women speaking up about this, but to publicly call each other to mass report videos from the black women and Mexican women speaking up about this in an attempt to shut down the conversation entirely. Because silencing women of color talking about a thing that affects them in particular, sure, that's not racist of you at all. Now, if you actually care about white supremacist um, people who were born and raised in white supremacy, raised to become leaders of white supremacy, and what kind of labor goes into unlearning that, then because it did in, fall, in fact fall on the labor of the affected people, particularly women to do that labor in Tilly's book and that was fine. In fact, that element, which is nasty, was romanticized. That the person who did all of the labor was in fact a person who he had dehumanized. That alone needs to be thought about. There's this book, Rising Out of Hatred, The Awakening of a Former White Nationalist, nationalist by Eli Saslow about Derek Black. Derek Black was the godson of David Duke, who was the Grand Wizard of the KKK, and his father was Richard Black, who created Stormfront, which is the largest white supremacist website. And it details how much labor went in from the people who he hated went into changing his mind. A series of people had a hand in this. It was not just one. And one of those was a woman named Allison who was Jewish, who would listen to the things that David would say and then do tons of research into what he was believing and then provide him with counter evidence and then do hours upon hours of labor discussing this with him. And a lot of the time he would still reject it. It. But she kept doing it over and over, putting her in this position where she was being dehumanized by him. This details the labor that went into from people who David dehumanized, how much labor was put upon them in order to change his mind. Maybe we should all consider if we're going to talk about people leaving white supremacy groups like the KKK, not using romance as a way to do that. Because we're already dealing with a situation in which one person is being dehumanized. We should not stereotype them and say, look how much she loves his alt-right tattoos, and instead start with nonfiction. Start with the cases where this actually happened. I feel like we have a responsibility to not fictionalize, romanticize, and stereotype real people who are living out this very real reality. That was Tilly Cole's responsibility. She failed at that, she recognized that, and she pulled the books. Period. That's what happened. And if you all are so interested, actually interested, interested in white supremacists leaving and unlearning that and how that actually happens and not myths about how that happens, then you are welcome to read this. It's short. I haven't finished it yet. Maybe we could read it together and work this shit out. That's our responsibility as people who would benefit from white supremacy. And it's okay to have responsibilities to another person. Like, I don't know how to explain to you that you do in fact have a responsibility to do right by other people. I don't, I don't know how to sit down and have that conversation with you. I'm really fucking frustrated with Tilly Cole's fans and I'm really fucking frustrated because the people who got all the heat from them were my mutuals and it was really sad to see. So that was authors behaving badly, Tilly Cole. A lot of that was just her fandom behaving badly and her not reining them in. But that's what happened. Um, let me know your comments and questions down below. Uh, 
uh, you can like and subscribe if you want but please go check out the voices of the women who spoke up about this down below and make sure you watch Maddie's review. I thought that that was such an incredibly well done video and such a, a labor intensive thing that she did so please go check that out. I will link that first thing down below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye. Also please don't write KKK romance. Please don't do that. Come on man. And before I go I have to say thank you for being a friend to my Therapy Bills patrons and those are Alexander, Ali Magpie, Amba Hextress, Brittany, Bo Bittany, Cammy, Chris, Claire, Des Roberts, Chris, DJ Rocktopus, Ellie, Emperor's New Blues, Aaron, Eric, Harley, Jack and Jill, John E, Calais No K, Casey McKenzie, Kate W, Caitlin, Quinn, Lady Kitty Bug, Lex, Alice, Peggy, Rain, Reese, SJ, Samar, Scarlet, Shiny, and SMK. Sorry about my washing machine in the background. Okay, thank you all so much for being a friend. And before I go, I have to say thank you for being a friend to my Potato Starch Marxist patrons, and those are AM Angel, Amanda, Andy, Angelica, Anita, Artie the Ninth, Ashley H, Ava, Ballads and Bookends, BB, Beck, Blythe, Bookish Brain Rot, Brando Sandoz, Marxist Alter Ego, Brie, Caitlin, Cardinal Ginger, Carlin, Cassandra, Catherine, Kathy, Chris, CJ, Cole, Colleen, Corwin, Corey, Darren, Deborah, Dex, Diet Goth, Dorian, Ebby, Ember, Emily A, Emily A, L, Emma, Aaron, Ezra, Hannah C, Hannah T, Harpy Kiro, Haley G, Ilianaka, India Inks, JM Tennant, J is on Olympus, JT, Jen Michelle, Jenny G, Jess Burler, Jessa Sue, Jillian, Jojo Bookish, Jess Pugsley, Kaylee, Kat, Catherine, Katie, Katya, Kayala, Kendra, Kylie, Laughing Cat Dog, Laura, Lazarus Ray, Library of Scars, Lisa B, LP, Lou Siri, Lustful Octopus, Martin, Madison, Marcella, Marquita, Malara, MK Books, Molly, James, Nat, Natalie, Never, Nicole G, Nicole R, Nyan Binary, Paige P, Penny Tilling, Foxglow, Pixel Stars, Pierre Atheon, Rachel B, Rat Sarah, Reba, Rebecca, Robin, Rosie, Rowan, Sicoria, Sadie, Samantha, Sarah C, Sarah H, Sarah the Bear, Shamed, Shannon, Sheen, Onion, <laughs> Sheen Onion. <laughs> uh, it's like 8 30 in the morning, and the, for some reason it's just cracking me up. Sheen Onion, Sheena K, Sean, Talia, Three Old Dogs, Tiana, Tina, Toast, Trash Can Teddy, Tito Phoenix, Wildcat, and Writer A. Thank you all so much for being a friend. Mm -hmm.